Hello, I am Professor N. K. Pandey from Department of Physics, University of Lucknow. In today's session, I am going to discuss on doublet fine structure. The Bohr model or the Bohr Sommerfeld model could not explain the doublet fine structure in alkali metals or alkali earth metals. And uh, the reason for this was very simply that uh, they had considered only the orbital motion of the electron. And they had not considered the spin motion. Now, we have each member of the series in alkali metal is a closed doublet, whereas in alkali earth, it is a closed doublet. Sodium yellow line corresponding to 3p to 3s transition is a closed doublet with separation of 6 angstrom. Similarly, potassium has a doublet separation of 34 angstrom and so on. And uh, each member of this group will show the doublet fine structure. Now, based on the experiment, there are certain observations about the fine structure intervals. For example, doublet separation increases with atomic number. Doublet separations in ionized alkaline earth are larger than the corresponding doublets in the alkaline metal. Within each element, doublet separations decrease in going to higher members of a series. Within each element, P doublets are wider than the D doublet of the same N, and similarly, D doublets are wider than F doublets of the same N. Now, about the doublet, we may say that uh, only the S terms are singlet. In fact, even S terms have the property of being doublet, but they do not show it in general. They show it being they show themselves being doublet only when they are exposed in a weak magnetic field. All other terms, P, D, F, they are all doublets. Such doublet structure in energy is observed for all the atoms possessing a single valence electron that is in the outermost shell. Usually, the doublet spacing is small and hence it is called the fine structure. To explain this feature, Allen Beck and Goldsmith first proposed the hypothesis of electron spin. The mechanism responsible for doublet splitting in spin orbit interaction, each energy level has got a spin multiplicity of 2 s plus 1, where s is equal to half. A spin is essentially a quantum phenomenon. This spin of the electron is found to be half h cross and here s square is equal to s into s plus 1 h cross square. Now, for a spectra of atomic systems containing one electron, the notations are like we have a small s is replaced by capital S, a small p is replaced by capital P, small d is replaced by capital D, and similarly, small f is replaced by capital F. The small sus subscript, two in front of each term, indicates that the level in question, including s level, has doublet property properties, and they belong to a doublet system. Now, we, are, we take some, uh, some clue from the classical, semi-classical model to explain the, the, uh, the interaction of a spin and orbit. Here, in the field free space, when there is no field applied, both orbit and spin are free to move so that the orbital angular momentum L star and spin orbital momentum s star they will process around their resultant j star by the law of conservation of angular momentum the angle between l star and s star will remain fixed and here is the scheme proposed for that that s star and l star are both processing about their j star and therefore the angle between l star and s star is fixed because the because of the conservation of law of angular momentum due to orbit spin interaction in a single electron system and energy level is split into two according to the fo following scheme. That is, this is splitting is given by a constant A, J star square minus L star square minus S star square upon two is equal to A L star S star cos and the angle between L star and S star. Now, for example, let us take the case of S orbit. For S, L is equal to zero 
and therefore because l is equal to 0 in the formula we can observe that if s is if we have l is equal to 0 j star is same as s star and therefore the gamma is equal to 0 now if we take the case for p star p orbit then l is equal to 1 s is equal to half so j is l plus half 3 by 2 and l minus half that is half so l star will turn out to be 1 into 1 plus 1 square root that is root similarly s star will be for j s star will be half into half plus 1 square root and uh, is equal to root 3 by 4 similarly j star for j is equal to half will be root 3 by 4 and j star for j is equal to 3 by 2 will be 3 by 2 into 5 by 2 square root now let us see the splitting of the energy levels for j is equal to half we have gamma again as in the previous formula gamma is equal to a j star square minus l star square minus s star square by 2 if we put the value of j star j is equal to half then gamma will come out to be minus a and for j is equal to 3 by 2 gamma will come out to be a by 2 and this splitting can be seen like this that initially we had a single p level and this because of the spin orbit interaction is split into two energy levels separated as shown by uh, that uh, for j is equal to half it is minus a and for j is equal to 3 by 2 it is a by 2 and similarly as it is for p we have the separation we have the splitting of d and f levels as shown in this figure you can see now so now once a single energy level is split into the two then there's there are certain selection rules that are operative for fine structure doublet now in order to distinguish between two fine structure levels having same n and l values half integral values as we have just now seen subscripts j or j small j or capital j are used now for transition of an electron from one energy state to another definite selection rules are in operation not all the transitions are allowed and these selection rules are based on experimental results total quantum number has n has no restriction and may change by any number but delta l that is l will change by plus minus one and j will change by zero and plus minus one now let us consider this the splitting as we have seen earlier of p d and f levels which are as shown here thus the splitting of the energy levels is in accordance with the formula that we have seen earlier that gamma is equal to j star square minus l star square minus s star square by 2 accordingly p levels are shown splitting like this the d level the d levels are shown splitting like this and similarly f levels are shown splitting like this now once these energy levels are split p d and f are split then the selection rules has to operate as to which transitions are allowed and which transitions are not allowed now as we can see for the transitions delta l is equal to plus minus 1 and delta j is equal to 0 plus minus 1 both these transitions from doublet p 3 by 2 to doublet s half and doublet p half to doublet s half are allowed similarly in the other one now in the third the, in this particular case pd transition you can see that delta l is equal to plus minus 1 and delta j is equal to 0 plus uh, 0 plus minus 1 are allowed but one here if you can see that there are two energy levels over here there are two energy levels here and of course we can see from here from doublet p half to doublet d 5 by 2 the value of j changes by 2 and therefore this doublet p half to doublet p 5 by 2 transition is not allowed so that means if delta j changes by 0 plus minus 1 delta l changes by plus minus 1 all these transitions are allowed but where delta j exceeds this these values those transitions are not allowed accordingly we have seen that now we can see that uh, in the p s this combination always we get two lines as we can see at the bottom but in all such transitions involving p d and d f energy levels we have three lines over here combination between doublet p and doublet s always give rise to fine structure doublet whereas all other combinations give rise to a doublet and one satellite line in designating any spectrum line lower state is written first followed by the higher state now let us consider the intensity rules 
now these intensity rules are best stated in terms of quantum numbers of electrons in the initial and final states involved the strongest line in any doublet arises from transition in which j and l change in the same way when there is more than one line in the same doublet line involving largest j values is the strongest that means for those transitions in which j and l change by the same value they are the strongest and if there is more than one such line then that line will be the strongest in which j will be having a larger value and if we go by these ones here we can see for example in the transition this one doublet p uh, doublet s half to doublet p 3 by 2 we see that l changes by 1 and j changes by 1 both are changing by the same number whereas in this transition we have l is changing by 1 whereas j is changing by 0 so this line is the stronger one and therefore it is shown over here but there is a possibility that there can be two number lines having the same change in l and j values in that case that line will be the strongest which has larger value of j for example if we see that here for the example wd3 by 2 and wp half l is changing by 1 and J is also changing by one in this one. Now here also, doublet d five by two, doublet p three by two, J is changing by one and L is also changing by one. So in this, but these two lines, L and J are changing both by the same number. But in this case, because J has a higher value of five by two, so this line will be the strongest. And you can see here that in terms of the relative intensity, this line is shown as the having the strongest intensity. now one more thing now let us after understanding the intensity rule in rules then let us understand the quantitative rules for relative intensities because we need to uh, appreciate what is the relative intensities between different lines and for that we have the sum of the intensities of those lines of a doublet which come from a common initial level is proportional to the quantum weight of that level that is if from some level two lines are coming up then the sum of the intensities of these two lines will be proportional to the quantum weight of that level and quantum weight is defined as 2j plus 1 similarly sum of intensities of those lines of a doublet which end on a common level is proportional to the quantum weight of that level now if we again go back to the same over here then if we are asked that let us say these two lines are coming from doublet p3 by 2 then the sum of the intensities of these two lines will be proportional to the quantum weight of this level and the quantum weight of this level is 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1 that is 4 so the sum of these two intensities coming out from doublet p 3 by 2 doublet p 3 by 2 is proportional to 4 much in the same way here we can see that on this level we have two lines terminating so the sum of the intensities of these two lines will be proportional to the quantum weight of this level that is 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1 again so we have to understand that the sum of the intensities of the lines coming from a single level is proportional to the quantum weight of that level and the sum of intensities of lines which are terminating on a single level is proportional to the quantum weight of that level and the quantum weight being defined as 2j plus 1 now this is the quantitative rules so if we apply this quantitative rule in the for example let us say in the pd transaction over here in the pg transition over here then this scheme is very much workable we write here wd5 by 2 wd3 by 2 here wd5 by 2 here wd p half now you see that from d wd5 by 2 the transition to this level and transition to this level that is some of the intensity just starting from wd5 by 2 is equal to x and this intensity is zero because this is a forbidden one because j is changing by 2 so the sum of the lines starting from wd5 by 2 is x and this x is proportional to sum of the lines proportional to the quantum weight of this level so you can see x and here the term in proportionality 2 into 5 by 2 plus 1 similarly sum of the lines is starting from wd3 by 2 and that is nothing but this y and this z 
from here to this and from here to this. So this in some of the intensities of y plus z is proportional to the quantum weight of this that is 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1 you can see from here. So the ratio of the two will be 3 by 2. Much in the same way, some of the lines ending on 5, doublet p5, 3 by 2. And that is, what are the lines ending on this? One coming from doublet d5 by 2, the other coming from doublet d3 by 2. So this is x plus y is the sum of intensities and this is proportional to quantum weight of this that is 2, 3 by 2 plus 1 you can see from here. Similarly, some of the lines ending on doublet d half and that is on the half what are the lines ending up? One is 0, the other is z. So here we have z and that is proportional to quantum weight of this one 2 into half plus 1 that is this and the ratio of the two is coming out to be 2 is to 1. So now we have basically three unknowns, x, y, and z, and we have only two equations to find them out. So we have to find out the smallest whole number which can satisfy the two. And if we go on doing that, then we find these numbers as x is equal to 9, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 5. Now this is same as the three lines we have shown, that this is the strongest line, this is the intermediate line, and this is the satellite line. Now naturally, if we see these lines, then this line will not be visible. Rather, this will merge with this line and the ratio of the intensities will become 10 is to 5, that is 2 is to 1. Much in the same way, if we consider the case of a doublet D term, they are also very close together so that the observed lines do not resolve the satellite from the main line. The two lines have the intensity ratio, 2 is to 1, as we have seen. So similarly, we have, if we go by the doublet F uh, and doublet D, transitions, then we can solve them like in the similar way as we have done previously. And we can have x is equal to 20, z is equal to 14, y is equal to 1. This satellite line may merge with either of the two to give an intensity of approximately 4 is to 3. Thank you very much for your kind attention.